Happy Tuesday, everyone. And so a very well welcome to this live stream. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Hey, Zilvan, thank you for inviting me. Happy to be here. We're going to talk about how to build your brand on LinkedIn. And there's probably no better person across whole Switzerland than you to ask about this. You are the CCO at Anibotics. Besides that, you are also LinkedIn's official Swiss robot man. I think you're mentioned as top voice in that sector on LinkedIn. You built a very significant followership. But before you actually started out your career, you worked in corporates and then you only moved to startups a few years ago. So why the shift? Why was that the right move for you? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me here on this uh, live stream today. Uh, it's going to be exciting to talk a bit about LinkedIn and about uh, the journey to build that growth. Um, so how did I end up in a, in a startup? I spent about 10 years in, uh, in corporate functions in two large Swiss industrial uh, companies. Um, first of all, in, in corporate development, uh, strategic marketing, and then I joined a company in sales and sales management. And then after 10 years of actually learning from the big corporates and really getting the, the processes and the details up uh, and running, I decided that I wanted to get more closer to the to the action a bit more closer into the you know in the steering wheel of, of, of building something uh, and decided to join a, a startup uh, now scale up uh, antibiotics uh, actually a circle coming close or, or closing a little bit because I've always been uh, fairly entrepreneurial also during my studies and and earlier I, I worked in many uh, student initiatives I founded an association uh, so kind of always had this entrepreneurial gene just wanted to get that back in action uh, and then after 10 years corporate uh, finally made the move to to joining a startup and has been been a great decision uh, so I've been enjoying it a lot over the last nearly three years now amazing very glad to hear that if if you look at your CV we could also say you sort of got the corporate education and then switched to the startup application do you think that this is sort of a good career start or career setup that you would recommend to people in in general yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there's probably not the right way to do it, but for me, it was it was a great one. Um, I I was able to learn really a lot and very different things in my in my ten years in corporate. I started off being part of a internal kind of corporate strategy team, which was basically an internal BCG consulting team uh, at the first firm. There were three other guys uh, and, and, and well, two guys, one lady uh, that. Uh, uh, that, that did five to ten years of BCG consulting and me who was a fresh grad so I was basically an internal consulting house so quite quite a lot to learn very very diverse topics um, and then my second uh, company I was more in sales so really going out driving around and meeting customers on this kind of on the construction sites every day and really learning you know from from the ground up how to do sales and then getting into sales management and taking along all the processes that these companies have developed over time uh and then basically packing them all in my backpack then bringing that over to a startup so you uh, you still have to build everything uh, but at least you've seen it how big companies do it um it's it's different as a startup because you can't build the end solution right on day one because you always need to you know take a step by step and and and, and but have the clear vision in, in mind and i think that certainly helped I'm not saying that this is the only way i think you can also right from university or right from not even having a, a degree kind of start your own business if you're entrepreneurial uh, you'll figure it out as well uh, i think there's there's not a right or wrong for me it was was a good way and finally uh, being able to to really contribute and shape and build something is, is great it really helped you to build that experience that you now brought into Anybotics. And you mentioned sales. I mentioned before you are LinkedIn's top voice. You have been mentioned as number one Swiss voice in robotics. And you've built this presence as it seems almost from scratch. You know, you built the big LinkedIn followership. And first of all, as a sales guy, I got to ask, why is the LinkedIn presence for you important, even relevant in your day job? Why do you put all that investment in there? Yeah, so I mean, it's quite quite interesting that there's still salespeople out there, even in my team, uh, that are not using LinkedIn as much as as, as they probably should. Um, for me, I I believe LinkedIn as, as such as a platform has made a tremendous kind of change in the past years from you know basically being your online CV 
to becoming really a, a platform where you where, where you where you generate business and, and, and leads with and there's there's a lot of focus from linkedin itself to put content creation up front uh, making sure that people actually not only go and, and, and you know see the background or the cv of, of certain peoples but they actually stay longer on the platform because they get their information from there um i do the same i i get a lot of my news and, and what's happening is actually coming from platforms like linkedin and many people do so so also your prospects as a sales uh, person your prospects are most likely also on linkedin depending on, on what persona you sell to and if that's the case there's there's hardly any better challenge uh, any better uh, channel than uh than actually you know connecting with them on, on linkedin and, and interacting with them uh so, so there's a lot of opportunities there um what, what i see what what is interesting is you know most of the sales guys uh they they don't like to do well that's maybe the wrong way but they Doing outbound, you know, is, is not the most favorable things of, of the normal salesperson. Right. Put it that way. Um, and LinkedIn is, is very similar. You can do outbound only because you're just sending connection requests and and, and, and and that's it. And then you hope that someone answers you and, 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 and then you say, okay, now I want to have a discussion with you. That usually doesn't work. Um, you can get inbound there as well. And the way you do get inbound is you create content, you're relevant audience is actually starting to follow you and, and, and like what you produce um, and suddenly they contact you um, and, and that's a much better starting point uh, for a sales discussion as well uh, so there's a lot to win from from doing that uh, and, and and amazing to me that there are still people out there that don't use this super easy to get started uh, kind of kind of platform I love that. And I think the differentiation you just made, it's not just like sending out cold emails or cold LinkedIn messages. It really is placing yourself as a knowledgeable person in this field that you're operating in and to really get these inbounds. So I wonder, what is your secret sauce? Where did you start? You know, where you said, hey, you had a few hundred, maybe a few thousand followers. Where did you start to then really, hey, I now double down on my LinkedIn game. What was the secret sauce? How did you stand out? Um, well, I, the, the interesting thing about LinkedIn is that or probably about any platform, but especially I, I know the stats from LinkedIn uh, that there's some 85 to 90 percent of the people that are on LinkedIn and there's like 900 million active users uh, on LinkedIn. So it's quite, quite big. Most of them, they just never do anything. They just look at what's popping up in their feed. Then you have like this 10 percent of people that actually interact with what's popping up in their feed. So they give a like sometimes very seldomly they actually make a comment, but, but most of the time they just like a handful of, of posts. And then there's this super rare group of half a percent, maybe a percent that actually creates content uh, and, and adds something to the platform. And so basically when you start doing something on such a platform, even if you're really bad and you have no idea how to write a piece of content or what to share, you're already top 1% of the whole platform, right? Because no one else does it. Uh, so it's super easy. There's, there's, you can just get started. So basically, I would say there's two two main things, secret sources, whether well, or not so secret, but uh, what you need to do. First of all, it's just do it, right? Just get started and do it. It's not difficult. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just start doing it. And number two is, keep doing it i think that's that's probably the the, the the thing that gets forgotten most of the time most of the success of these platforms is not because i don't know you post three times it's because you post every day um and whether it's good or not good doesn't matter because the algorithm is gonna forget right i mean it's like <laughs> your, your home page if it's on google page two you know no one is going to look at it that's like if you post something and it's one week old no one is ever going to look at it anymore um so it doesn't matter but the consistency is is key that you do something new every day or every two days or however rhythm that you want to start i think these two things are really making making all the difference um and did also for me it sounds like a very entrepreneurial approach to linkedin you know as if you would build a startup better done than perfect and show consistency that you keep going so now I would like to dive deep, deep into a bit more of your content strategy. Can you tell us a bit more what pieces of content do you work with? How often do you post? What is sort of your strategy in terms of the content plan that you publish and post through your LinkedIn profile? Sure. Um, so I <clears throat> I think I started, I had a LinkedIn profile for I don't know, 12 years or so, um, and I started uh, posting regularly 
about a year and a half ago when I think I had like two or 3,000 followers on LinkedIn amassed, you know, actually basically people that I know and, 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 and or, or at least, you know, seen somewhere, university colleagues and friends from work, etc. cetera. Um, and, and then I, I gave myself a challenge. I think it was in, in August in summer holidays a year and a half ago where I said, okay, let's, let's do three months of actually posting every day one post uh, and, and just do that and see what happens. Um, and then that was quite hard to do, actually, because, you know, you, you get going and, you know, have an idea. And then I just started writing about what I encountered at, at Anybotics. Uh, basically, you know, today we did this or uh, that's how we think about robotics or that's how we think about uh, growing our sales team or basically whatever just, you know, came to my mind. Uh, I did that for right. about three months. Um, and, and then I continued until the end of the year because it was, was kind of working. And these five months of 2022, I think I grew my, my followership from, I don't know, 3,000 to 5,000 followers. So not, nothing spectacular, but, you know, you see the results. That's the nice thing in, 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 in these platforms. It's not like going to the gym. You need to train for six months until you see something. You, know, you, you get started and people start following and liking the stuff. So that was, that was actually quite cool. Um, and then I, you know, end of the year, end of 2022, I was a bit bored out and said like okay you, know, you post every day and you know it doesn't really so so i had a kind of bit of a pause but then i restarted again and then in summer last year um and that was all just text and and, and images and, and and basically um you know creating my own content which cost a lot of time and energy um and then i i, I tried out in summer last year tried out to just share some cool robotics videos because there's tons of videos uh and and and, and figure out you know if, if if there's cool robotics things maybe there's a, an audience for that uh, so i started posting some some robot videos um with an immediate uh, massive impact in terms of reach and and and, and the interest there was just you know it just scaled started scaling from there um so i, I kept doing that uh, for i kind of switched i stopped posting all my know very uh, effortful uh, content and i started just you know sharing cool robotics videos um for about you know another five months uh, last year i uh, ended up at i don't know some thirty thousand followers end of uh, 2022 uh i thought 2023 um and then I, I i became a bit boring again to just post robot videos so i said okay let's let's do let's continue the robot videos because they obviously drive more followers that seems to work mm -hmm. uh, let's re-add my I once a day some thoughts on actually adding my own thoughts to the platform um, to get some more more quality in there uh, and that's what I've been doing uh, since uh, has been working quite well um, this year also another 30 40k new followers so far so it's it's kind of the cool thing it's it's, it's exponential so whenever yeah. you look at your graph it's like oh it's going up that's nice and then you look at it six months later it's still going up but it's a different kind of thing it's uh, it's actually quite quite interesting um, yeah and you, you need to Kind of get some sort of a a content system ready that you know you you, you get you, your ideas you save kind of uh, certain things you see and then and you optimize yourself i don't have a lot of time to to spend two three hours every day to to do that so it needs to be very efficient to 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 get it done it sounds like almost everything in life compounds right so that's also the case on the linkedin game as it seems you mentioned different content pieces. Is video the top performing content piece for you in terms of engagement, reach, etc.? Or what is sort of the best content format that works best for you? Yeah, so I think it depends a lot on what you want to um, kind of achieve. Um, mm -hmm. And, and <clears throat> you know, for me, the goal for LinkedIn has always been ultimately to drive to somehow support anybotics uh, in 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 you know getting more interest, getting the awareness up, um, and so there's there's multiple things. What I what I do is I still link now robotics as a category. You know, I believe if if that category gets more more interest, that will ultimately also benefit us as a company because we're playing in that category. Uh, then I'm sharing a lot of content around my scale up journey um what i'm doing as a cco here at anybotics and you know the working environment which kind of puts a certain employer brand uh, onto linkedin because people most of the people that now interview at anybotics uh, at least in commercial they, they somehow seen some of my content and uh, and some of the, the good one you know scale and how we prioritize people and diversity and all these kind of things they actually like that so it helps to to get some some good inbound uh uh either leads for 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 new hires or helping 
people in the candidate pipeline to actually get a better picture of who is Anybotics as a company. Um, uh, and that also drives then kind of the sales cycle or the, the, the hiring cycle. Um, and then ultimately, it's generating um, generating leads for our business, you know, getting getting some inbound mm-hmm. of people that are actually interested in using robotics. Um, and then to, to get those targets, it depends a lot on the uh, on, on what kind of content um, you, you want to produce, but also then what format you use, because videos, they drive a lot of impressions. Um, they, they get shared, they, they can go viral. So you have a couple of videos that have thousands of likes. Um, but that's whenever it gets very viral, it doesn't really stick with the audience because you might like a video of someone because it's a cool video you don't follow that person you don't you're not interested in that person uh whenever you create content that is more meaningful um Mm -hmm. people actually start digging a bit behind it uh, and go like okay who is that and that that's now the second time i saw a good infographic from that person um and and i think that those are the more meaningful followers uh that that you then have so it's it's a bit both right it's getting the volume up but also the quality depends a bit on the asset that, that sounds a bit counterintuitive right because some people think oh i just need to have one or two viral posts and then my profile <laughs> goes through the roof but it's actually the opposite you need to have probably less viral content but really high quality <laughs> content to then drive people towards you in whatever means yeah i, I guess it's a combination uh, in a way because the i, I remember the i probably had six seven months of linkedin uh and and, and i posted every day and, and put a lot of effort in it and then at the first time i had a post i got more than a thousand likes and i was like wow that's like insane how can you get a thousand likes for a post it was crazy um and then you know two three months later that happened once a week because you just got more followers and it just becomes more normal um right. so vi- viral posts also is is kind of a function of what is your audience, right? If if, if you have 5,000 followers getting uh, 1,000 likes, that's pretty viral. If you have 70K followers, uh, which is my thing today, then getting 2,000 likes is kind of, yeah, that was a good post. And if it's only 300 likes, then that ooh, that, that probably wasn't a good post, right? right. Um, but six months ago, that would have been crazy for every post that, that you do. So, um, so I think viral helps you to sometimes just get some good stats up. Um, but But the consistency is what really makes people stick because people don't follow you. I, I believe, I don't know, I don't have to prove, but I, I I think people don't follow an account when they see something the first time. They like maybe the post, um, mm-hmm. but when they see it again and again, and it's the third, the fourth time that they see something that adds value to them, either it's fun because the, you know, it's a cool video or it actually is meaningful content or so, uh, they, they go like, oh, I want to see more of that person. And then they start following you. And the viral posts usually they end up in the people of your third, fourth kind of degree network. Um, they see one time something from you. So it's nice if, if, if you have half a million views on a post, but it doesn't really drive followership, I believe. But that's, that's yeah, that's fair point. We, we also read from people who sometimes complain about the change in the LinkedIn algorithm. Have you also experienced that, that some, sometimes something just changed in the algorithm? And for whatever reason, you cannot really explain it, you get much less reach or even much more reach? Did you even experience something? And how do you actually keep up with the LinkedIn algorithm? Yeah, I think there's, I think LinkedIn has put a lot of efforts in the last 12 months in favoring actual content that, you know, that is meaningful, number one, um, and, and kind of not favoring viral content, you know, just for the sake of, you know, you get 500,000 likes or something like that um and more stuff where you have an expertise and then people follow you for your expertise and then if you have content that is adding uh, thoughts or is is funny or or is educative um and is within your expertise then that gets get support uh and 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 if you have decent conversations and it keeps people on the platform obviously then then that is getting support Uh, so that has been a a more fundamental change uh, about a year ago um which also explains that it's much harder to add followers today and get viral posts than it was maybe two, one or two years ago. There's a couple of people that have, I don't know, 100K followers, but today when they post, they get nearly any engagement because they got a lot of those followers because they had a couple of really crazy viral posts two years ago and that mm-hmm. just doesn't happen anymore. Um, apart from that, I think it's it's all about, again, consistency and, and, and the content you produce. Um, I'm not... You know, I'm not really trying to 
to really figure out the algorithm. Is it better to post at eight o'clock in the morning or at nine o'clock? I don't know. I just post, you know, every day the same day. And I could try and do it differently, but probably it doesn't really matter because eventually you'll just have people and they see your stuff. And if they like it, um, it's much less about the algorithm. It's much more figuring out how people think when they go through their LinkedIn feed. So what you want is you want them to stop scrolling when they see your stuff and watch it um, and and actually engage with it, right? So how do you do that? You don't do that when, when you post a video and, and you know, I, I post videos about whatever robotics. Sometimes you see videos that start with a very slow scene and, you know, first the logo of the company. No one likes that. You know, the first two seconds need to be super action. You need to see something moving and then you are interested and want to see more. Um, you need to get, need to have a good hook. Uh, the first two lines of your post need to kind of engage people that they want to read more. Um, I think those are the relevant things, but they're not really regarding the algorithm. It's more about how do people actually, when when do people stop and listen or watch or, or read your, your content versus just keep scrolling, um, I, I would say. That makes a ton of sense. And can you also walk us through a typical week, how you prepare and post your content on LinkedIn? Like, where do you get the content from? How much time do you invest in the content creation process? How does that look like in a typical week for, for Enzo? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so the, the interesting thing is, um, I, I I show you what I, or I explained to you what I did a year and a half ago when I got started. And, and that's where most of the people are like, wow, that's so much work. And you know, I would never manage to do that. Right. Um, so I wanted to get started and have one post per day. So basically once a day, I started thinking about what do I need to write? And then you start writing, you find the visual, it probably takes half an hour to do so to get a good, decent post out, which is quite a lot of work uh, for, for then in the beginning, you get maybe 10 likes for that post and it's depressing. Um, and, so, so you need to have a good system in place. Today I spend, I, I post two to three times a day, uh, usually two videos and maybe one content, um, one text post with an, with an image. Um, and, and I spend probably an average of five to 10 minutes max per post. Uh, so I spend less time than earlier, but I have much more, more content. Um, the way, the way I do that is I, obviously you, when, when you're more active on such a platform, you also start following other people that post great content yeah. so i don't publish much original content so i don't film myself and and, and, and do stuff like that uh, because that's very time consuming i don't have time to do that um so i and, and there's so much content out there that is great um so if i see someone else and, and i probably have another 20 30 40 people in the robotic space that that also regularly post material on robotics if i see some of that person finding a cool video that a is interesting um, and where I think I can have a perspective on it, uh, but also see that that works well on LinkedIn, because again, the first couple of seconds are, are very relevant. Uh, I saved that post. Um, and so I have a long list of saved items uh, in my LinkedIn app. Whenever I scroll, I, I like something, I saved the, the, the item. Um, and then usually on, on in the evening, uh, I quickly kind of go through those saved items and say, okay, that's a post, I uh, let, let me do that post tomorrow. So I'll, I'll download that video. I, there's there's easy ways to download videos from from LinkedIn, uh, so I can upload it again natively and, and share it. And then I'll I'll use uh, ChatGPT uh, to to help me kind of write the text, um, which I think everyone that doesn't do that today is anyway kind of missing missing out. out. <laughs> um, and then it's it's mostly about I, I trained a couple of prompts that they write the post in the structure that I like, uh, which you know has mm -hmm. some emojis has some structure in it it's easy to read it's a good tagline uh, and then it's basically i I'll, I'll 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 feed some material to chat gpt and say you know i want this and this and this idea to be included write a post and then i got the text uh, i'll combine that with my 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 video that i that i upload uh and i schedule that for the next day uh, it yeah. takes me five minutes um and I'll do that twice uh, a day. And then basically the next day, the posts go live. Um, and, and sometimes if I have more time, I schedule for the next couple of days and sometimes just, just the next one or two posts. I usually try to have the next day scheduled because you never know what's going to happen on the next day. Um, yeah. And if you do kind of keep the posts coming, then you need to get some system in. So now I'm fairly efficient, I would say. Uh, and, 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 and then, yeah, and then you have, there's also this, a lot of discussions around to you do you actually need to interact with all the comments that you have on your post, etc.? I, I don't know yet. Uh, sometimes I do. 
Uh, sometimes I don't. I don't see any difference in in in, in the performance of those posts, uh, really. So sometimes when I when I get good comments, I give some comments back. Uh, if it's just yeah, that's a great post, I just ignore it because there's there's really not you know there's nothing in a, in a discussion, kind of. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. And I heard you said two videos and one text post per day. So is that about the ratio of two to one in terms of content pieces from more viral potential versus more quality potential? Yeah, it's it's kind of the, the videos in my experience now over the last, I don't know, six, seven, eight months is they just, they have the potential that they get a lot of reach um, and, and also help add more followers uh, to to my account yeah. um and they establish i would say my 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 persona on linkedin as someone that publishes a lot of cool material around robotics because one of my, my personal mission uh, you know as a person and, and obviously also as, as, as a cco of any robotics is i want to make sure that the world has a positive kind of feeling around robotics because there's still this thing out there that you know robots are going to take my job and you know kill the robots and all these kind of things which which are not uh, you know they're not to be disregarded but there's also the other way of like hey a robot is going to help me it's so cool that we actually have automation uh, and and there's so many cool things that ai and robotics can can do and i want to make sure that as many people as possible out there get that positive feeling because that is ultimately going to help us and every other robotics company to have an easier way in, in, in kind of really getting mass adoption of our technology. Um, and cool videos of robots that that, that do cool stuff uh, and, and, and showing people that there's a robot for everything by now. You know, there's just everything mm -hmm. has a robot now. Um, just just increases that that awareness. So these videos, they, they help kind of establishing my persona, but the whole space as, you know, that's where you look for when you want to see what's happening in the world of robotics um but i don't add much of my personal value basically it's a video it's not my video i, I just share hey this is a robot that mows your loan which is cool because then you don't have to do it yourself <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a great yeah. video but it doesn't really it's not really smart right you, everyone can do it so i'll try to share also some stories around how we build any robotics to kind of perform and, and win in 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 the, in the kind of robotics industry and you know, what are the challenges of scaling a team and, and how do you actually make sure that you align marketing and sales and, and stuff like that, which is then more mm -hmm. where I, I add value. Those posts take more time because it's actual work to do them. Um, so I don't always have time to, you know, write a long post every day. So maybe I, I do one, maybe I don't. Sometimes I recycle stuff. So, you know, it might be that I had a great post three months ago. The topic is still relevant, but three months ago I had 30k followers now i have 70k so there's another 40k new followers that haven't seen the post from last time why not share it to them right that's also one thing that people miss usually that you know when you grow uh, also in, in startups if you if you launch a new product doesn't mean that everyone else has knows your old product right it's still even a six months old product for most of the world is still a new product right and i think that's the same on, on content on linkedin 100 percent you also said you get spontaneous applications or people who see you on LinkedIn and then want to work at Anybotics. You get leads that you can then tackle with your sales team. Nevertheless, I assume it's pretty difficult to really clearly measure the return on investment. Now your time investment got much lower and you spend <laughs> five to 10 minutes per post. So that's quite a, an easy investment, I would say. Nevertheless, what is your return on investment from doing all these efforts on LinkedIn? Can you quantify that in any way i think quantifying it is is difficult uh you could you would need to track it somehow and then you right. could capture some of the actual return um because some you might not know it might be that uh, i don't know someone sees you on linkedin but then goes via the website and obviously that is not tracked but but at least what comes directly to me in terms of messages and i get a ton of messages every day and most of it are kind of you know people wanting to kind of sell something uh, obviously um but but there's also some some leads gut feeling maybe two three four relevant discussions per per week or so that, that get started like that um most of them don't lead to anything some of them do uh which is you know quite interestingly um we just closed a really 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 big deal a couple of weeks ago at Anybotics, um and the the initial contact was a person kind of reaching out 
to me on LinkedIn because he saw my content and was like, hey, let's talk. Um, and then over the last six months, we closed a big deal. And, and given robotics is not the normal total contract or total lifetime value of a couple of K, you know, if you sell a couple yeah. of robots, that's big money. Um, and then right. spending spending an hour a day on LinkedIn just for this one little deal uh, would have been enough to finance my LinkedIn activities for the next years, right? So, so it's it's certainly positive return on investment, uh, but hard to hard to hard to assess. Uh, and on the you know, we also want as any botics, we want to make sure that we are really a great tech employer in the area uh, in Switzerland and Zurich. Um, that people know us. That that you know, as an employer. Uh, we stand for something and that uh, online presence, especially on LinkedIn, is also very relevant on that, that, that companies actually are active and that people of companies are active, that you can can see who is that company, what, what, what do they, what style do they have, etc. I think that that certainly helps, but also here it's, it's hard to quantify. You could try to measure it. We don't, um, but it's certainly positive because we get good feedback from that. Amazing. And you do focus on LinkedIn. So everything we talked about now is focusing on your LinkedIn game, why don't you re replicate your LinkedIn success to other platforms like TikTok or Instagram? Pro yeah, um, maybe three reasons. Number one is I don't know them. Um, so, you know, I've, I've been on LinkedIn. I, 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 I think I have a Twitter account, but I never use it. Uh, I have an Instagram account. I never use it really. Um, I don't have a TikTok account, and I deleted my Facebook account like five years ago. Um, I I never really got into you know using social media a lot. I started using LinkedIn as kind of my you know major thing, and then I started posting. So it's more about I try to create. I'm I'm not I'm not using it too much um, apart from that. Um, so you could probably do it, but I just don't know. Let, let's say I, I don't know how. The other platforms works and i figured out how linkedin works um, for me for us um then i think it's also linkedin is a place where again this transition that linkedin goes through they put a lot of effort and actually make it worthwhile to get creators onto linkedin so there's a lot mm -hmm. of effort going into helping people actually create content because that keeps people on the platform um and there's not that many creators yet um which means you know it's much easier kind of grow your own kind of followership so there's less competition especially in the in the, in the niche of, of robotics which is an important niche that there's a couple of, of online statistics that align that i think it's one of the top 10 percent of niches uh of, of 500 niches or so out there um that, that people are interested in and look for but there's it's one of the most underserved niches in terms of content creation so it's an easy one. If you're in robotics, you start posting stuff, you see instant growth because people are interested in it. There's not so much other people doing it. If you if you post about life lessons, you know, productivity hacks and, and AI stuff like that, everyone is doing it, right? So it's much harder right. to, um, and there's generally less less people. And on YouTube, you need 20 million followers. Otherwise, you're, you're kind of useless. Um, and I think on LinkedIn, that's that's not, not the case yet. And then lastly, I think it's very targeted also. A lot of business people, Actually, our audience, at least, is probably more on on LinkedIn than on TikTok. That will change, you know, because but but our audiences are more the forty-year-old people and not the twenty-year-old people. So for B two B and in, in industrial segment, TikTok is probably less of an interesting channel. But but I don't know. Maybe that that's more a hypothesis. We, we we could look into that a bit more. Exactly, and if we take into consideration what you just said, is it sort of also a big takeaway for? any founder out there that they should start thinking about and start building their strong LinkedIn or in general social media presence? Is that sort of the key message, the key takeaway that you would like to to give away with them? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think the, there's, for me, there's absolutely no reason why as a founder, as a, you know, not even just C-level or, or senior manager or any, or sales guy, whatever, um, and why you wouldn't spend at least some time on LinkedIn uh, in the beginning yeah. it is maybe a bit effortful and you know and you need to get over it and I started posting every day and I think the first two months I got from all my friends they were like ah you're an influencer now and, <laughs> and why do you do that <laughs> you know you get all these comments um and 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 then it, the comments go away um and then when you keep doing it and then you get your first million of views and then you get your first 10 million of views and it just continues um and there's a lot of the positive return is, is great and it's it's not difficult to do again two success factors 
start doing it, keep doing it. It doesn't really yeah. matter and you get you get better at it anyway. Um, so so yes, I, I, I think it, it's super important. Also, LinkedIn now, that's very new, rolled out a feature which is kind of thought leadership uh, promotion where whereas as LinkedIn, obviously as, as company, you can do paid campaigns and you can invest in, in, in your own posts being shown as, 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 as ads to, to, to your, your specific audience, which is great because you can actually target the audience fairly specific given all the data that LinkedIn has. Um, but people don't want to read from companies. They want to read from people. So now as a company, you can also promote your employees or other people's posts. So Anybotics could pay that my posts are actually shown to our core audience, which for our core audience is going to be much more interesting if they read it from a person than they read it from the company page, which is great. And if people do that, you can you can get much more bang for the buck for 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 your paid campaigns as well on LinkedIn. So yeah, absolutely. Conclusion is start doing it and uh, and, and 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 try and see how it goes. And I see more and more people doing it. It's actually quite 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 interesting. I love that. And thanks to you and joining this session today, we now have a blueprint how we can execute that and hopefully stick to it over time to also benefit from this compounding effect. And so that's all I had for you today. All my questions got answered. Thank you so much for joining us here. Lots of success and all the best. And I'm sure we're going to hear and probably see and read much more from you on LinkedIn now. Uh, absolutely. Thanks a lot, Sylvain, for having me on the on the live stream here. And uh, everyone that has questions, just send me a connection request. Add a message because otherwise I might not see it. Uh, and uh, and then we'll we'll connect and and we'll chat about it. Thanks a lot, and too much success. Get started with LinkedIn. It's great.